morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know what's going to happen with my voice this morning. I didn't know until uh, 7 a.m. Zoom call with my husband that I was having voice issues. That's what happens when you live by yourself. So, so I'm sorry about that. I'll do the best I can. Um, let's see. The first thing that I want to tell you is that there's going to be a soup luncheon this morning following worship, and uh, then we're going to decorate the sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. And I understand there's going to be crafts for the kids. Are there any additional instructions we need for after worship this morning? Yeah. I also have Advent calendars for all the kids are labeled down there on the table. They pick them up sometime during the painting of the dream. Okay, so there are advent calendars for all the kids right. and they're down in the fellowship hall. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Kat, for doing that. The next item is that there is a clipboard circulating again this week. We are looking for uh, somebody to light the advent candles on the summer hall and someone to do fellowship time on December 4th. So um, I, I know like the choir didn't get a chance to sign up last week and what not so, but the board is making its way around. Uh, there was no choir practice this Wednesday, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, next item is that there will be a congregational meeting next Sunday following worship for the purpose of hearing and acting on the report of the nominating committee. They have a full slate to, and they have filled <coughs> the entire slate of full and partial terms, so we will act on that next Sunday after worship. They, uh, we will also be ordaining and installing Ryan Stobot as a ruling elder that Sunday during worship, so we look forward to that. <coughs> Stephanie is unable to be here this morning, uh, but she works on our newsletter, and she needs to be working on it. So if you have any information for the newsletter, send it to her as soon as possible. And uh, we still need a nursery worker during the worship, so uh, I'll do that. You're going to do that. Oh, no. Thank you. The nursery, the nursery upstairs? Not that close. Yeah. Yeah. I'll That's what I mean. You're going to do that. Yeah. I was already, I already said I'd do it, but I didn't have to tell you that. So I got it. I got it. Awesome. Like, just this week or all the time? I, I know. I usually tell Stephanie when I'm going to do it. And when I walk in the front, I'm like, oh, I didn't tell Stephanie. So I'll do it. Awesome. Thank you. So much. Yeah. <laughs> Any other announcements? <coughs> yes. I got another quick one here. Um, at the business, they are. I think you said next. Yeah, they're actually eight fifty. I don't think I know. So um, no, they're actually eight fifty because we came last year. So um, if you put your name and then um, if you just want to just leave the money there or pay one of the deacons, um, and then if you lose it, you're going to Okay. So the point set up order form is going around. They're eight dollars and fifty cents, and you can uh, put the proper information on the form. We're going to circulate that a couple of weeks in a row around. Okay. Any other announcements? All right. Well, hearing none, I invite you to stand if you are able and join in our call to worship. Show us the promise of spring, the flowering of summer, the glowing glory of fall, and our thanksgiving will be lasting, O oh God. Show us a smile on a baby's face, the fun of two children playing, an old person cracking a joke, and our thanksgiving will be joyful, O oh God. Show us one neighbor helping another, one family member sacrificing for another, the community working together. And our thanksgiving will be thoughtful, O oh God. Show us the church caring for the vulnerable, worshiping wholeheartedly, learning enthusiastically, 
and our thanksgiving will be faithful. First tip is number 20, all things bright and beautiful. In faithfulness, 
you inspire us and grant us your peace. Know the peace of God that passes all understanding. God's new way stretches before us. God's forgiveness is reality for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Church to remind us that 
we are on this big wheel calendar. All right. Okay. <coughs> Let's have a prayer. <coughs> going to have to sit there just because I have to give you whatever this is. Okay? I'm sorry about that. You put your hands together and bow your head and close your eyes. Here's just God, we thank you that you made the church and you made it <coughs> special. And that each year we remember the life of Jesus and the difference he made to all of us. In his name we pray. Amen. Great, right, you can take care.
God dressed in the grass and sit in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace? Won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles want for all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. It was a beautiful day on Thanksgiving Day back in 1989. Carrie, my husband, whom you haven't met yet, but maybe someday. Carrie and I had traveled from our seminary in Louisville, Kentucky to Ypsilanti, Michigan. It was the first time that Carrie met my parents. It was a bit of a culture shock for him. His parents lived in a 5,600 square foot house. My parents lived in a 1,000 square foot apartment condo conversion, and that was actually an upgrade for them. And so he woke up on Thanksgiving morning, and he smelled nothing. None of the expected aromas of pumpkin pie or turkey roasting in the oven. Nothing was cooking. No one was hustling around trying to get the feast prepared for our Thanksgiving dinner. Because our Thanksgiving dinner that year was salmon with steamed broccoli and orzo with poppy seeds and parmesan. Carrie was stunned. Never in his life had he been deprived of turkey and all the trimmings on Thanksgiving. <coughs> no homemade noodles, no cranberry sauce, no dinner rolls, no blueberry muffins, no turkey <coughs> salad. He wondered just what kind of weird people he had stumbled upon. And to make matters worse, he didn't like salmon or steak broccoli. <laughs> Actually, he learned that that day because I don't think he had ever had them before and he didn't like it. So Carrie was having trouble feeling thankful and grateful on this particular Thanksgiving. None of the traditional aspects of Thanksgiving were there for him. No family, no smells, no abundance of food and leftovers to munch on later. None of that. If you haven't had that experience before, I ask you to imagine it now. No turkey, no stuffing, no pumpkin pie, no huge gathering of family, no football. There wasn't even football on. Maybe when you strip away the tradition, you could find what lies underneath. Why do you celebrate Thanksgiving? What is your reason for the season? Before, during, and after your Thanksgiving celebration, reflect on why you are doing what you're doing. Don't do things mindlessly or automatically this year. Ask yourself the tough questions. Know why you do what you do. Do you do all that baking and cooking because you enjoy your family's thanks and praise? Do you eat all that food because it just wouldn't be Thanksgiving without it? In other words, out of habit? Do you eat too much and then sit down and watch football because that's what's expected? If you bake or donate food for needy families in the area, for Thanksgiving baskets for the say, do you do it because you feel more fortunate? If you serve Thanksgiving dinner to the homeless, why do you do it? Why do you do what you do on Thanksgiving? Is it out of gratitude? Is it out of place? Is it out of habit or routine? Out of peer pressure? Out of nostalgia? We're all 
long way removed from those original pilgrims who had lost many of their loved ones during that previous winter. They rejoiced in the prospect of physical survival now that they had a successful harvest. And according to the myth, they shared a feast with the local Native American Indians. Their meal may have been more like Carrie's first Thanksgiving experience with my family than you think. We were taught that they had turkey and corn and apples on their plates that day. These are all products that they would never have seen or tasted before their arrival on our shores. Shifting from eating little chickens and quail to a giant turkey must have felt like shifting from eating fish sticks to grilled salmon. Our Thanksgiving feasts have lost that mystery of sharing strange foods with new friends of different cultures and faiths. After years of being persecuted in Europe because of their religious beliefs, after a long, uncertain, dangerous journey, after a horrible year in which many of their loved ones died, after facing their fears of forming strange new relationships with <coughs> savages, after persecution, starvation, grief, and fear, the pilgrims felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude on that Thanksgiving day, eating foods they had never seen or never tasted before. And while we may feel a sense of gratitude on things on Thursday when we sit down to feast, I want to challenge us to take it deeper. I want us to examine how we get to that sense of gratitude. I was never taught this concept growing up, but it seems to be that there is such a thing as negative gratitude. It's kind of the old, but there, but, I can't say this right, there but for the grace of God go on. I was never taught that as a, as a young person. It's that kind of gratitude. Sometimes I think we can feel a real sense of thankfulness when we compare our circumstances to others. As you drive through Peoria and you see the homeless man who sits with his dogs on the corner by the freeway, do you think, thank God I have a roof over my head? As you brought your canvas to the church for the food pantry, maybe you gave God thanks that you would have enough food to feed. As you hear about the war of the Russians on Ukraine, do you praise God for this land of democracy and freedom? <clears throat> and those are all common, legitimate ways to feel and express gratitude, but they're built on kind of a shaky foundation because someday you may be on the other side of that. As Christians, we can go deeper than that. We can build our gratitude on a more solid foundation. We can turn from giving gratitude for to giving gratitude to. We can turn from giving thanks for the gift and go to giving thanks to the giver. True gratitude is built on nothing less than our faith in God. A believer can always feel grateful. No matter how awful the circumstances, we can always feel grateful to the one who gave us the gift of life and the one who continues to sustain us even in the midst of trials. We can each feel thankful for the material things in our lives that make life easier or more enjoyable. But if you want true thanksgiving, focus your gratitude toward God and what God is doing in your life and in your relationships. If you want to transform your Thanksgiving dinner this year, do something radical. Change your focus. Spend some time living out of the wisdom of Psalm 126 that says, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. Tell your family members how thankful you are for the gift of life. God has given you, and for the years that you've had to 
enjoy it with your family. Tell them how you're thankful for the gift of the beauty of God's creation and for how God is revealed in every single sunset. Share how you are particularly grateful for brothers or sisters who will listen to you and work like you. Express your thanks for the ability God has given you to know God. And once your family members close their mouths and start to think differently and share with one another, you'll find yourself right in the midst of the best Thanksgiving ever. Even if you are eating salmon and steamed broccoli. And think how much easier it will be when you move on to discussing the true meaning of joy at Christmas time while we'll shouting down on shrimp with green peppercorn sauce. Thank God for understanding it. I invite you to stand if you are able, and we will say what we believe using the Apostles' Creed, which is on the screen. Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessing. Amen. We now join in singing hymn number 643. Now thank we all our God. <clears throat>
wealth and kingdoms. All right. What joys and concerns would you love to share this story? I'll, I'll ask that we continue to pray for Wanda Cooper and her family as they mourn the death of Delano. Um, and Edwin Brinklow, who's the pastor of the Presbyterian Church in Kingston, who is our COM ministry partner. His mother died unexpectedly after a surgery to repair a broken ankle. She was a lay pastor in the Presbyterian Church, so not only is her son and his brother mourning her death, but so is the congregation that she served. So, her name is Nancy. I want us to give thanks for Ryan, Jody, and Caitlin when I know are in there preparing our lunch and so. Yes. Um, I have um, a great for her and uh, she had COVID and she was in the Closing stuff 
part of the house that we're buying and selling. Um, all of them fell soon, so it means I won't have to be driving back and forth quite so many times in the future. So, um, prayers for us as we do that. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to worship you and to remember that we are truly thankful for the lives that you have gifted us, for the way that you love us and care for us, the way that you inspire us through your Holy Spirit and the guidance that we get, not only from the Holy Spirit, but from what we learn about Jesus Christ through your scriptures and the way that Jesus Christ continues to love us, to pray for us, to care for us as we go through each and every day. We thank you for the time that many of us are going to be able to get together with our families this week. We pray for wisdom as we travel. We pray for patience as sometimes family gatherings can be a little bit stressful. We pray for miracles, we pray for love, hope, peace, and joy. Gracious God, we thank you every day. We especially thank you on our hardest days. Remind us that we are never alone. Oh Lord, you know that our prayer list is long. There are many that we are continuing to pray for that we did not mention this morning. We trust that you will be with them, supporting them, strengthening them, letting them know that they are never alone. And gracious God, sometimes when families come together, it can be a reminder of those who are not gathered at that table. Be with them in their grief. Help them to remember the positive. Help them to know that you will give them the strength to, get, to continue forward into this life that they're going to lead. For all that you bring to us, for this congregation, for this community, for our extended families, we give you praise and thanks.
us talents to your service, our prime time to the word and way of Christ, our commitment to those who Christ would serve today. Receive these gifts of money so that they are used in the local and wider church. In your name, O oh God, will be glorified. Amen. Closing hymn is number 634, To God Be the Glory.